What up, it's Brandon here. Welcome to Blade of News, your number one rollerblade news source. We got some juicy stories to talk about, so let's just roll into it with some industry news. Starting off with a sad story, the old number one news source for rollerblading, before me, <laughs> Roller News is now officially dead. If you go to the website, it just doesn't load. Everyone saw this coming. They hadn't updated the website in months. Uh, but they still drove a lot of traffic. I made it onto Roller News once and that video is like the top video on my channel. <laughs> so they definitely had a lot of reach still. So it's a shame they're gone. But that being said, I ain't gonna miss it that much. Uh, if you're looking for something similar and you're, or something to replace it, check out Blade of Union. They're definitely best thing out there for daily Blade content. They'll be linked in the description. Moving on to our next story there. Winter Clash happened and it looked amazing as always. It definitely has to be one of the biggest Royal Bane events we have, if not the biggest. Pro results are in and of course, Joe Ackerson got first place. We got Dominic Bruce getting second. We got Maxim getting third and we got Martin Danning getting fourth. Martin Danning is only 18. He's not a pro rollerblader for Rosies. He's just an ambassador. And he's up there getting fourth with all the pro skaters. That's crazy. Shout out to Martin. As I'm sure you know, the event was live streamed by Ricardo Lino and Blade of Union. And it sounds like next year's live streams are going to be absolutely insane with a huge upgrade. I know Lino's going to invest in having two cameramen, two different angles. It's going to be like a full on live show. I'm excited to see how that goes and Travis at Blade of the Union. He's got an actual press pass and he's gonna be up on the court filming, so keep an eye on those two. If you're looking for content around the Winter Clash, stay tuned for the media part of this video and I'll tell you where to look. Speaking of Winter Clash, in particular the winner, Joe Atkinson, he almost lost his prize money. When the crowd picked him up and he was crowd surfing after being announced and coming first, the envelope with the prize money fell out of his pocket and he didn't even realize, but luckily some sweet kid found it and gave it straight back to him. And if that doesn't show how great our community is, I don't know what does. Um, I really hope I can go to Winter Clash at some point. Looks like such a good time. Anyway, speaking of Joe, right after he won, Rosie's announced that he's no longer a pro skater for them and that they've parted ways. This of course caused a lot of people to call out Rosie saying like, how could they lose someone who's on like literally winning all the competitions and like all the comments on the post they made were pretty bad. <laughs> Just kind of assuming that Rosie's fired him pretty much. But And of course that makes zero sense. Why would they fire him? That's so stupid. <laughs> but anyway, what I assumed from this was that Joe got picked up by another company. But instead of that, he has decided to fund himself. He has started a GoFundMe page called Get Joe Out The Chip Shop. And what he plans to do with this is to fund his traveling and entering all skate comps and stuff. Uh, he's had a goal of $10,000 and he's looking on track to make it, which is good. Um, of course, this GoFundMe page has had a decent amount of backlash, specifically from other pro rollerbladers, in particular Nick Lomax on a story, kind of calling him out, kind of poking fun at it, saying like, I want a Lamborghini. Well, I'm starting a GoFundMe page, you should fund it. It's, it's pretty funny, but you know, I can kind of see where they're coming from. I don't think GoFundMe is the platform for this. Uh, GoFundMe is more for people in crisis that need the money more than people just kind of begging for money, you know? <laughs> it's weird. Uh, after all the backlash, Joe did make a statement. Uh, I've only got this weird screen cap I got from him on Instagram that he kept with someone else. Kevin his post on Facebook, which I couldn't find. But anyway, <laughs> uh, it pretty much just says that the reason he started it was because at Winter Clash, uh, a lot of people were just giving him cash donations to add to his prize money just because they really like the skating and think he should be getting paid and he wanted to make a way for people to do that more seamlessly and like electronically so he started the GoFundMe page. In the same statement he also said that the reason he left Rosie's was because they had a non-negotiable salary drop for him which makes zero sense and I'm super disappointed in Rosie's in this because how could you cut someone's pay who's winning all the competitions, who's like top of your team? How could you cut their pay? That's super messed up. And I really hope it's not happening to Nils Jansen and anyone else on the team because it's real scummy. But we don't know what's happening with Rosies. I'm sure this is just going to add to the hate that they already have, but you know, I'm sure they know what they're doing. Just to add more of my opinion in here, I think it would be more smarter for Joe to start a Patreon. I've seen a lot of people suggest this to him too just because it's not a short-term fix in he could build an income off that and he could have cool tiers like you could have your name in the credits of his vod's or he could like send out a signed poster it just makes more sense to me i hope he picks that up and looks into it 
Uh, I know it'd be quite a lot of work to set that up, but I think it'd be worth it, and it'd be, I think it'd be less looked down upon than making a GoFundMe. Even though they're both donation platforms, there's just something wrong about funding your, your pro skating through a GoFundMe page. Something's not right about that. That's just my opinion though. And of course, this is Blader News. I want to know what your guys' opinion is. Let me know in the comments down below. I'll be down there talking as always. Moving on though, we've got a, another juicy story. Lino's getting some backlash for joining Micro. Uh, this is apparently because it appears that Micro has stolen. Allegedly, I'm going to say this. No, it's not even allegedly. <laughs> People are just assuming that uh, Micro has stolen the molds for the FR skates. Of course, the FR skates are very loved brand you know people love the owners and they, they really like it and they don't want to see them screwed over um, and people are very upset that Lino such a high person in the rollerblading community would go with a company that would do something like that but the big thing here is the big overall thing is that no one knows what happened um, Micro and FI and Siba they were in a business agreement and none of them have came out and said like like if I hasn't said Micro has stolen our molds you know, Micro hasn't said anything either. So how do you know that that's what happened? How do you know that it wasn't a business deal that they got the molds, you know? And when Lino announced he's going with Micro, he did say that, you know, he was looking into this kind of stuff and I'm sure he's found out all about it. And the fact that he's joining with them makes me think there's probably some good reason that's happened that he knows about that we don't. So keep that in mind. I think that all the hate he was getting for this is very unnecessary. But I was, I've never skated their fast skates and I don't really know much about them, so maybe that's why I'm not as annoyed. Another bit of backlash came out of this controversy as well. People started to call out Lino for not saying in his reviews that he worked for PowerSlide. He has a few reviews of PowerSlide products where he doesn't declare that he worked for them. And I honestly think he didn't do this on purpose. I can even relate to it because <laughs> I have my company laced, right? And, you know, I posted on Instagram the other day saying it's my favorite shirt, but... I didn't declare it was my shirt, mainly because I figured everyone knows that by now. But of course, with new people constantly coming to your channel and stuff, they don't. So you should probably be in a habit to always announce these things. And it appears Lino's doing that. He's even taking it a few steps further, saying that he works for Micro when he's not even reviewing anything to do with Micro, which I think is pretty funny, but <laughs> also a good move. It's my overall opinion on all these things that they're kind of just stupid. I don't think Lino deserves any of this backlash. He knows what he's doing. That's just my thoughts, sir. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are. And another story, though. I don't have no idea how this is even a story. How did this even happen? I don't know. But we got some really offensively named wheels being made in the US, being sold somewhere else. But the big underlying thing there being they were made in the US by people who understand what this word means. So the wheels were called N-word wheels. N-word, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and the company didn't do anything about it until they were called out and now they've since deleted the product from their page and they made a statement saying this which I think is pretty load of bullshit you know this shouldn't be happening it's 2019 this shouldn't be happening it's crazy and like the the way they worded saying that people are just saying that over where they're selling the wheels it's just that's just a major cop out if you ask me this is crazy how is this even a story that's all I really want to talk about, that one. It's kind of just a lame story So Let's move on to a much better story. And that is Rollerblading's in the movie. There's a new movie out now called Alita Battle Angel and it features rollerblading. See, it's actually got some pro rollerbladers that we all know. Uh, it's got Chris Haffey in it, it's got Frankie Morales, it's got Jay Barr and, and a bunch of other pro rollerbladers, which is really cool. It's getting rollerblading back out into the mainstream for people to see. So I highly recommend going to check that movie out. I haven't seen it myself yet, but I really want to. I think only good things can come from this. That's it for industry news for this month. Uh, moving on to product news. And then we got some cool products to talk about. First off, we have them showing off their new pro skate for Alex Brosco, finally, right? And it's in this crispy, powdery blue skate. It looks super Alex Brosco, very him. And I don't know, they look really cool. Really cool. Not enough for me to want to try them again, but we'll see. We have some more skates too, coming from Razors, and this is the first pro shift skate. I'm not gonna murder the guy's name, but here it is here. Uh, it's a Razor Shift 2, but within this weird mustardy color, and I'm not, I'm not the biggest fan of it, not gonna lie, but it's cool to see these different colors coming out. Good to have some options, so I'm all about it. And our final piece of product news, Rossi's tells us that the M12 skate is 97% recyclable, and it always has been. This isn't a new thing, uh, which I think is very cool. Even if it was unintentional, they're thinking about the environment, 
uh, that makes me like this skate even more. So <laughs> that's it for product news. Let's move on to my favorite part, media you should check out. Now we got heaps of good content around the new aluminum frames, the ones by Kaiser and Solar. Uh, so the first ones I'm gonna recommend checking out is a video by Rob, where he compares three different frames and two of them are the Solar frames and the Kaiser frames. It's a really good watch, a really good close look at the frames. We've also got two videos by Lino where he's skating each of the frames and I've never wanted to get this, the solar frames more than after watching this video. They look so good. If you wanted a better look into Winter Clash, uh, I'm gonna link to my favorite live stream from the event, and that's Lino's one. But also USD posted a raw clips edit, and it, oh my god, it's insane. Montre, Montre, man, he's killing it. And Rosie's also did the same, they got a similar video. Uh, that's a very good watch too. In case you somehow missed it too, uh, there's a video by Razors that came out a little bit back called Boltless Future. It's so good, highly recommend checking it out. Crazy stuff goes down in that. And keeping on the old winter theme for you poor fellas over in the US, uh, we got a couple snowy videos. One from Farmer of course, because he doesn't skate anywhere but in the snow apparently. And another really cool one from Acosta Blades, where uh, he went to the skate park and oh, one. one side of the landing from the rail was covered in snow and he decided to make it a challenge, and it's a really cool watch. Highly recommend it, go check it out. If you're looking for some podcasts, I uh, highly recommend Back to Blading's podcast, specifically episode 30. Uh, he's literally talking about everything I'm talking about here, pretty much, and he's got some really good insight on stuff like the Lino controversy, um, the gut skates, and another podcast, of course, the Jump Street podcast. Everyone knows about it, but in case you don't, they have a really good episode with Oigan on it, and Oigan's just such a great dude, man. He's amazing. The more I find out about him, the more I like him. So you should check that out. Finally, once again, I have a channel to shout out, which is cool. Uh, it's from a guy named Noah. He, it's early days, but I see some great potential in him. He's got some cool videos already, even though he's only got a few. Um, so definitely check him out. He'll be linked in the description. As well as every other video I've talked about. So yeah, get down that description there. And that's it for Blade News this month. Of course, please let me know your thoughts on any of the stories I talked about today. I'm interested to see what you guys are thinking, and I'll be down there talking to you, of course. If you want to support the series, as always, cop the new official Blader News mug. Um, it actually says Blader News on it now, which is super cool. <laughs> but anyway, thanks so much for watching, guys. Huge shout out to my patrons, Deb, Dennis, Fabian, Flowey, Freaky Geeks Podcast, and Mike. And of course, I'll see you guys next month or next week, depending if you watch me for this or anything else. <laughs> Peace out, guys.